argument regarding the possibility of DLC 5 is now over. In my opinion, the cycle has now been broken. As of May 4th, DLC 5 for Black Ops 3 has officially been confirmed. It's, you know, it's so hard sometimes oh to really think about, God. you know, what, um, you know, what kind of topics to talk about when you kind of go and visit someone. So, I think the most important thing to talk about would be... Are you wearing that shirt the whole time? <laughs> um, Zombie Chronicles. But May 16th. May 16th? Like, this first, early? First on PlayStation 4. Oh my god. May 16th. going on everybody this is DK Dynamite and on May 4th on JC Backfire's YouTube channel Jason Blundell cleared the air about many many things in regards to Call of Duty Zombies. First off JC Backfire produced an incredible video slash interview with Jason Blundell. The intro to that video was phenomenal. I love the editing, I love his effort and I just absolutely love his style and take on the video he uploaded for us. So as I talked about in my previous video, out of nowhere, we got this random tweet from JC Backfire telling us that a major reveal with Jason Blundell was happening on his channel on May 4th. So a lot of us at first had doubts. We're like, no way. Why would Treyarch release or reveal a DLC5 trailer on a somewhat smaller YouTuber compared to a bigger YouTuber who posts zombies like Mr. Dalek JD, NoahJ456, so on and so forth. But it all makes sense. DLC5 initially started off as a meme, almost a joke. And since it's a community-driven expansion pack, why not allow someone from the community who's very passionate about zombies reveal DLC5? And that's exactly what happened. So Blundell came on to JC Backfire's video in his college apartment and literally teased us with Zombies Chronicles by unzipping his sweater which is also really cool, by the way. I would love to have a Treyarch sweater. He unzipped it, and there he had it. A Black Ops 3 shirt with the Zombies Chronicles logo. Everybody who posted a reaction to JC Backfire's video reacted in the exact same way, just completely shocked that a fantasy that has existed within the Call of Duty community for so long is now becoming a reality. And guess what? It's becoming a reality on May 16th, first on the PlayStation 4, just as Jason Blundell said himself so this also confirms the ps4 exclusivity deal still being relevant with dlc5 for black ops 3. you could consider this more of an expansion pack than a dlc pack since it does feature eight maps compared to the usual five maps of a dlc but it is what it is it's still dlc5 so blundell described zombies chronicles as a celebration of zombies with more incentives and surprises to come which will probably be revealed a little bit during their live stream on Monday. But he joked about still having secrets left despite all the leaks, so he is completely aware of all the crazy speculation and talk within our community. Over the past, I would say, two months, the community has erupted in such a unique way, such a beautiful way, than it ever has before. And while there's always DLC5 talks every year with Treyarch's Call of Duty, this year in particular was special. There was a lot of different evidence and speculation and some really interesting leaks that we never had before for a game like Black Ops 1 or Black Ops 2. So that's why the pieces of the puzzle came together in a very vivid way compared to any evidence we had back then for Black Ops 1 or Black Ops 2. So, yes, he revealed and confirmed some information about DLC 5, but we didn't get any gameplay, we didn't get a trailer, but we got a very nice and humble discussion with JC Backfire and Jason Blundell. He answered a lot of questions and revealed something insane, which I'll we'll talk about in a little bit. But some things I'm wondering, which weapons will be on these remasters? Blundell said that these will be HD remasters of our fan favorites. And the maps we're going to be seeing are the ones that already got leaked. Nocturne Toten, Shino Numa, Verrucked, Kina the Toten, Ascension, Shangri-La, Moon, and Origins, which is a fantastic lineup of maps. But since he described them as direct remasters, does that mean we'll see the same weapons we had back in World at War, Black Ops 1 and Black Ops 2? We'll just have to wait and see. 
will they stay true to their originals in terms of the map layout maybe the perk locations we'll also have to wait and see on that what about the ray gun mark ii or the mg08 will those weapons return within origins we'll just have to wait and see as well because origins is a fantastic map but with the different gameplay mechanics that black ops 3 offers there's a lot of things that could be changed including the possibility of PhD Flopper returning. We don't have Dolphin Diving in Black Ops 3, so I'm not sure how PhD Flopper would work. Will PhD Flopper be replaced with Widow's Wine? That's also a huge possibility there. But what about cutscenes or the new loading screens we saw in the comics? Will those make their way into these remasters? Will we see a cutscene for each remaster within Zombies Chronicles? Or will we simply see a new loading screen for each of these maps? based on the loading screens we've seen within the Call of Duty Zombies comic. That's also a huge possibility as well, which you may get an answer to during Treyarch's livestream tomorrow. How about the Pack-a-Punch ammo types? Will those make a return out to these remasters as well? Due to the huge variety of Pack-a-Punch possibilities we have within Black Ops 3. That's also a possibility which could help the community a lot in getting to high rounds on some of these original maps. But a map like Ruck didn't have Pack-a-Punch back in World at War. So if they bring Pack-a-Punch to a map like Verruckt, will that change gameplay a lot? Or will they stay really original and true to the World at War version by not including it? We'll also have to get an answer on that hopefully very, very soon. So as he explained within JC Backfire's video, this is great for fans who came into the Zombies community very late. There's people who started playing Zombies towards the end of Black Ops 2 or within Black Ops 3, and those type of players have an experience, a nostalgic feeling with maps like Shino Numa, Kinder Toten, Shangri-La, and especially Moon. Maps that had some very, very exciting and just epic gameplay overall. And that's just the gameplay. I'm not even talking about the Easter eggs yet, which is a whole other topic I'll talk about in a little bit as well. So as he said, these are recreated slash remastered versions of those maps, not remakes. What he means by that is that he's not going to take each one of these maps and sort of do what I call a giant effect to them by remaking the map with our 2.0 crew, with completely new dialogue, maybe another side Easter egg, so on and so forth. But with that being said, he also made it very clear that with the advancements in technology, with our current gen hardware, he just wants us to imagine how beautiful maps like Shangri-La and Origins will look, and all the other maps as well. He spoke about slight variations to each of these maps. Even though they're still remasters, he still wants to add slight variations that are only possible with the current gen hardware. So some theories I've made with that statement is that for a map like Ascension, which was originally planned out to be a lot bigger than it actually turned out to be, there was of course a door that was near the Pack-a-Punch area with chain locks on it. People thought it was a secret door to a new area, but it wasn't. Treyarch confirmed that they planned for the map to be a lot bigger than it was, but due to the hardware limitations at the time, they just couldn't do it. So the possibility of seeing that door open with a new area to Ascension is certainly possible with this new remaster within Zombies Chronicles. That's just an idea that I had. But maybe some slight additions to the maps, extra little barriers here and there could be added. But he also mentioned how passionate the Treyarch team was with bringing us Zombies Chronicles. And as you guys can tell, they've only selected the maps that our OG4 were present on. So out of the eight maps they were present on, they were at first thinking about which four they wanted to do. And they really couldn't decide, so they were like, fuck it, we'll do all eight. Which to me was hilarious to hear on JC Backfire's video. Because not only is four already a huge gift from Treyarch, but eight double the usual is insane absolutely insane so yes he mentioned it was a lot of work it wasn't as simple as clicking a reskin button and boom the map is ready for the playstation 4 xbox one and pc it was not that simple but yes he did say there could be anything from ciphers small easter eggs similar to the one we had on the giant on these new remasters so looking forward to see what additions and slight variations there are on these remastered maps Maybe even a slight twist to the easter eggs that we have within Ascension, Shangri-La, and Moon. We'll also have to wait and see what that turns out to be as well. Because as I said before, in order to do the Big Bang Theory slash super easter egg on Moon, you need the Golden Rod from Call of the Dead and the Focusing Stone from Shangri-La. But we don't have a remaster of Call of the Dead, so will they somehow just give us the Golden Rod when we play Moon? Even though we may still need the Focusing Stone from the Shangri-La easter egg, We'll just see how they give a little twist to the Moon Easter Egg once it releases 
on May 16th. But Blundell also said he is staying faithful to what the maps were, but realizing the new potential these maps have on current gen, getting the most out of the experience with our current gen hardware while staying true to the original. This is a special one-off package, as he described, and Blundell has seen the community ask for a DLC 5 for years now, with some of our fan favorite maps returning as remasters. And now, he's turning that huge, huge fantasy into a fucking reality, which is insane. I don't see how you can hate Jason Blundell at this point. I don't see how you can hate any of the developers from Treyarch, Sledgehammer Games, or Infinity Ward. They put in a lot of work. Even if you don't like the content that's produced, the work that's put into that content is just... You can't even describe it. It's just unbelievable. And Blundell made a couple of jokes here and there, talking about how people consider him a troll. They don't like what he did with zombies. But he clarified a lot within this video. So not only did he say that the leaks were true, but it fit in well with their schedule towards development on Call of Duty 2018. He also mentioned how aspirations of Origins literally exceeded the platform at that time. So what that means is that they used almost every bit of GPU or any type of hardware to make Origins possible on the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360. So just imagine how much more they can do now on current gen. I'm not saying they're going to change the map completely, but they're going to make some pretty decent variations to some of the big areas on the map which require a lot of GPU from our platform. So I just can't wait to see how much smoother the map is going to play out once we play Zombies Chronicles. But he also clarified that there was writing on the paper. Back in December when he did a live stream with Treyarch and he said he couldn't say anything right now in regards to the future of Zombies, there was actually writing on that paper which had the name Zombies Chronicles on it. Blundell also clarified that the team over at Treyarch knew they were going to be doing Zombies Chronicles when they attended Call of Duty XP. So as they were being interviewed by bigger YouTubers and a lot of gaming websites, Blundell had made a comment saying the revelations would last us over 18 months. At the time, that created a huge, huge, huge discussion within the Zombies community in regards to a super easter egg, in regards to any future DLC 5 maps affecting the ending of Revelations, breaking the cycle, triggering new steps by doing the easter eggs on previous maps differently, so on and so forth. So the fact that he clarified that with JC Backfire kind of gave the community a sense of relief that there probably isn't this super easter egg in Revelations in any way. But there could still be something, still a little something, after completing all the easter eggs with Zombies Chronicles and all the remastered maps. Maybe there could be something that may trigger a new step on Revelations for something very small. I'm not expecting a huge new cutscene or breaking the cycle just yet, but maybe something small. We'll just have to see. But... The comment really cleared the air in the sense that there isn't some big, massive easter egg quest that we haven't found yet. Something that would actually take us 18 months to solve. That is not the case. He meant that we'd be active on Black Ops 3 for another 18 months after Revelations came out. But he of course couldn't reveal exactly what he was talking about because he's not allowed to. But yes, he meant there was something else in the works. And that of course was Zombies Chronicles. So... As he also mentioned the JC Backfire, the key to great storytelling is making things provocative. And his job, as he said, isn't to troll people. So this is what I was talking about earlier with his little jokes that he included within JC Backfire's video. He really made it clear that he did not erase the story that was written by Jimmy Stalinsky. He didn't come in and reboot the zombie storyline. He gave the zombie storyline a lot of depth. He answered a lot of questions that we've had ever since World at War, which is unbelievable. And as he said, he didn't erase the original storyline. He added brackets to it. He made it clear that the storyline from World at War up to Black Ops 2 Buried is a fracture. And he clarified it again with a huge reveal of the official and massive timeline of Call of Duty Zombies. He made it clear, very, very clear, that the end of Revelations was not a full stop to the zombie storyline. It was just brackets. So at the end of Revelations, this was the entire cycle of Call of Duty Zombies. From World at War to Revelations, that is one cycle. That leaves Trick the opportunity to do whatever they want with their next game in terms of zombies. They can introduce a new cycle, introduce new characters, introduce a different fracture of the universe, 
a different timeline, etc. So, in response to a question asked by Mr. Dalek JD, and in response to Mr. Ralph Waffle's request for intel after reaching a certain number of likes on a interview he did with him, Blundell presented us with the official Call of Duty Zombies timeline. So this is a whole other discussion that I'll be talking about in a different video. But as he said, the timeline includes the multiverse with all interrelations among every fracture, every map, and every timeline. He presents us with every answer, just about every question we've ever had for years. And to briefly give you guys an example of what I mean, this timeline clarifies anything from Yuri from Ascension actually being the Pentagon Thief on 5. The Giant Unburied, aka Leroy as we call him, has a different name. His real name is Arthur. And guess what? He's the Wolf King's servant, as seen in the Der Eisendrach painting. People were making theories about that for the longest time, and finally, that has been clarified. But the timeline also provides us with the actual meaning of Mahab of the Dead and Shadows of Evil, along with some pieces of storyline that haven't been explored for years, such as Richthofen joining the Illuminati. So once again, pieces of storyline that were left unanswered ever since Black Ops 1 are now back in the cards, now have depth and factual information answering some of those big questions we had. So I do plan on making many, many videos rounding up all the universes as we now know, based on this huge timeline, of course. We can now say that our Origins crew is known as Primus. Our OG4 from the fractured World at War up until Black Ops 1 universe is now known as Ultimus. And we know our transit crew is now known as Victus. So this is once again, just unbelievable. But another piece of storyline that got really clarified with this timeline was something that left the community arguing about for years now. And that is the fact that the Samantha from Dimension 63 is actually the same Samantha from Origins. So, after the Easter egg on Buried on Maxis' side, of course, we now know that the Maxis side is canon, Richtofen does not. Samantha notices how her father has really become corrupt by the Dark Aether. And with that, she opened up a portal to Dimension 63, our Origins universe, and contacted that Dimension's Maxis for help. That then begins the cycle we saw at the end of Origins up until the end of Black Ops 3. We also got huge clarification on something that I always believed in ever since the beginning of Black Ops 3, but now it's confirmed, that the voices Richtofen was hearing back in Black Ops 1 were indeed the voices of the Shadow Man. This timeline made perks, wall weapons, and even the Pack-a-Punch canon pieces of the zombie storyline, explaining the origins of some of the perks some of our famous weapons, how Pack-a-Punch came to be, all of that good shit is answered within this big ass timeline. So the timeline that he presented JC Backfire with is considered one of a kind. And is of course available online on Call of Duty's website. You of course need a laptop to see it because it's so fucking big. But in my opinion, this could be a possible incentive with purchasing a physical copy of Zombies Chronicles. And what I mean by that is how recently at multiple Mexican retailers, they were offering the ability to pre-order Zombies Chronicles as a physical copy along with this definitive edition of Black Ops 3. So if that's the case, maybe this huge ass beautiful timeline will be offered as an incentive for that? This timeline answers so many huge questions that we've had for years. And it honestly allows a Zombies YouTuber to sit down and make videos on this for almost a year. There's so much information to talk about from every realm, every dimension, every timeline, every fracture. It's almost infinite. There's so much to talk about now. There should no longer be any more questions in regards to the zombie story, but there could of course be a few things they will hopefully explore in the next game in regards to Primus, the Great War, the Apothecans, Dr. Monty, etc. But the other day there was of course an official statement released by Treyarch, written by Jason Blundell himself, telling us to expect the gameplay from the bigger YouTubers, of course, of Zombies Chronicles leading up to the official release 
of the DLC itself on May 16th, and it was confirmed by some YouTubers earlier that gameplay, early gameplay I should say, will begin starting tomorrow, leading up to Tuesday, May 16th, when Zombies Chronicles officially releases for the PlayStation 4. But thanks so much for watching, everybody. One last thing I wanted to add in was something I saw on Twitter the other day which really caught my attention. There was one YouTuber, who I'll leave down below in the description, who unfortunately wasn't invited to Treyarch to record Zombies Chronicles gameplay. So, in return, Treyarch sent this YouTuber screenshots, aka an early look, at some of the remastered maps. And I'm not sure if it was a joke, but among one of those screenshots was Mob of the Dead. And this YouTuber asked Treyarch to clarify what this screenshot meant, and supposedly, once completing the super easter egg across the 8 remastered maps, it'll unlock Mob of the Dead, giving us 9 maps total on this DLC. So that's certainly a possibility, because Mob of the Dead wasn't even brought up at all within the video by JC Backfire. Maybe it'll be talked about tomorrow with their live stream. But if this is true, this is unbelievable. If there's like a flytrap easter egg, like we have in the giant, on these remastered maps that triggers something new or unlocks a Mob of the Dead remake, then holy fuck, this has got even more insane. I won't talk too much about this, but all I, all I said in my previous video was that the community should not be ungrateful in any way just because their favorite map, Mob of the Dead, is not included with DLC 5. It's clear from a story standpoint why Mob of the Dead is not included, but we should be grateful we're even getting a fucking DLC 5 at all. Something we've been asking for for many, many years now. Who gives a shit? What if it's remastered with Treyarch's next Call of Duty, which may include the mobsters again? Or Al? Who knows? Just be patient and be grateful that we got something that we shouldn't even be getting. A DLC 5. Really hope you enjoyed this little news roundup in regards to Zombies Chronicles, which has been officially confirmed by the man himself, Jason Blundell. Peace. As the gates to Agartha opened, the four heroes were rewarded with riches beyond imagination. From that day forward, they knew that Samantha would keep them safe forever. Getting everything wrong. I told you before that her eyes should be blue. It's my turn, Eddie. I can do whatever I want. But you don't even know how to play properly. Girls don't know enough about zombies. What's the choice of a shooter? Make sure the windows are locked before you come down to the basement. You'd better do what your dad says. I didn't even get my turn. Tomorrow, Eddie. You get to make the rules. I promise. Come on, Fluffy. I wish the heroes in our stories were real, Sam. I know what you mean. But we will make everything okay. My dad says he has a plan. <laughs>